So, so in the world of cholesterol metabolism now, it's, uh, cholesterol metabolism, I think, is a really highly misunderstood subject as well. So can you maybe give us an overview? Can you give our listeners a, an idea here of how to interpret their cholesterol? Because a lot of people go to the doctor and they get these numbers back and it's difficult to understand what's the difference between total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, triglycerides. So can you give our listeners just an idea here of uh, what are some good numbers to shoot for and what do these numbers actually mean? Well, I don't think uh, there's never been a number that caused heart disease. What causes heart disease is what is passing through your lips every day that is going to injure the ability of your delicate endo, intra-arterial endothelial cells to make nitric oxide. It's when you diminish your nitric oxide. Now, there are plenty of people who are close to me that I, who over the last 30 years never get a cholesterol under 190 or 200. All right? They're never going to have heart disease. Why? Because they're, they are never passing anything through their lips that is going to injure their endothelial cells. They eat carefully. It's just that their liver has a thermostat that decides that they need a type of cholesterol of 190, or that's the, one, that's the uh, amount of production their liver is making. Now, every single one of us has a liver that's making cholesterol from the time that we were infants. And... When does it really become problematic? We know, for instance, some autopsy studies that if you uh, look at the autopsy results of young women and men between the ages of 17 and 34 who have died of accidents, homicides, and suicides, coronary artery disease is now ubiquitous. Not enough for their cardiac events because the cardiac events probably are not going to start until they're another 20 or 25 years later, late, 30, late 40s, 50s, and so forth. With what? From a disease that they've had since they were teenagers. So you go to, when you graduate from high school in this country, you get a diploma, and you also get the foundation for heart disease. Now, what have they been? None of those kids don't have cholesterol that are that high, but what have they been eating? All the wrong foods. A classic example of, but there was a beloved uh, television journalist who used to run Meet the Press by the name of Timothy Russert. Timothy Russert was just a, a marvelous person. And uh, he had uh, this wonderful program, Meet the Press on Sundays. And one Saturday, he was working on his program when he had a cardiac arrest, heart attack, and they could not resuscitate him and he died. And I can remember listening to the Larry King show when his cardiologist was saying to Larry King, I don't know what's happened. He, uh, I had him on the good drugs. His LDL cholesterol was about 70. Well, at the autopsy, they found that Tim Russert was just absolutely loaded with all kinds of plaques throughout his coronary arteries and his aorta. Now, in other words, you can beat down your cholesterol with a drug and get a very exciting number that you think is going to protect you and then continue to eat horribly. The, the key thing is, you know, for instance, how many statin drugs do you think the Okinawans take or the rural Chinese or the Central Africans? Zero. How much heart disease do they have? Zero. Except if you go to the, in that Central Africa and you look at the, the, uh, the, the tribesmen, the Maasai warrior, right? They, they're herdsmen. They live uh, with these cattle that are grass-fed. They eating meat, milk, and blood. And there was a, a physician in this country uh, who was uh, <clears throat> very excited about the fact that they were some sort of a marvelous exception. He was going to prove how grass-fed meat uh, spared you from any heart disease. And so he went over to uh, Africa and he autopsied 50 of the uh, Maasai who had died. They were loaded with coronary artery disease, okay? There goes your grass-fed, you know, it's crazy. Meat is meat. And dairy is dairy. <laughs> is, it, is it possible to have cholesterol values that are too low? Uh, I, I, I suppose it's possible. But if you're asking me, have I ever seen it or have I heard of it? You could probably take enough drugs that you could get yourself into trouble, but that would be pretty hard to do. I've 
Really, have I ever seen anybody with a cholesterol that's too low, especially if from eating, if from the standpoint of eating uh, in a healthy manner. Uh, I just don't think that's going to be a, uh, a problem. Got it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about LDL particle size. This is a very hot topic. Is it important for people to get a test done to assess their LDL particle size? Is that what the Okinawans are doing? Is that what the real Chinese do? Maybe the Papua Highlanders are getting their LDL particle count. I never get those. The patients come in sometimes with them. I never get particle counts. Particle counts never, never gave you a heart attack. What gives you a heart attack is what's passing through your lips every day that you're eating that is going to injure the, and sorry guys to drive the point home, but that's the message you have to have. You don't have to spend a lot of money in, 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 lab, in the lab, <laughs> or lab tests. We're trying to get away from that. We want to get away from spending all this money on unnecessary tests. If they're eating whole food, plant-based nutrition and not injuring their endothelial cells, yeah, you don't need particle counts.